Hey guys, welcome to another knife unboxing and first impression. And as you can see by the title, I got another knife. It is a SOCOM Bravo. I have this SOCOM Elite here, um, and I'm going to use that to open the box and maybe use it for comparisons. So let's just get right to it. I been waiting for this thing to come in i just want to film this thing and open this box so i can play with it so just getting it done now the reason why i got this knife in particular is i like this so calm uh, i like the fact that it's tactical but I like the fact that it's tactical, but I don't like that it's tipped down. I really can't stand that about this knife, so I just never carry it. Judge me if you want to. So I wanted a, I don't have any tactical knives. I don't really, you know, put myself in a situation where I think I need, you know, tactical capabilities, but... On the other hand, I do like having a knife on me that ha has some thickness to it and some ability to use as a pry bar if I had to or, you know, I don't know. If I'm going to carry a knife, I'm, I'm going to deal with the weight and the fact that I'm, you know, people know that I'm carrying a knife. I might as well have something that is much more capable. So I want to just maybe like when I go for a hike in the woods or uh, around the road, something that I would have a knife that's just super duper tactical but like I said I don't want to carry this one because of the the tip position I just don't really like it and it just sits funny in the pocket like if the pocket is straight then I can stick this all the way over to the left and not worry about it opening it up because it's up against my pocket but if the pocket is slanted to get this over to the left, it just, it rides really weird. And I just don't like carrying it in the right. I don't want to carry in my back pocket. Um, so I don't have too many save queens, but uh, this has been one of them. So I saw this knife here. And then another thing too, I only buy, been buying U.S. made knives. So uh, this is a Chinese made knife made by Reich. Um it's similar to the Elite, but it's not. It's a uh, it's a production version of a custom uh, Bravo. I forgot the name of it. I think it's Bra uh, Custom Alpha. I think it's called and the knife that it's. This is replacing is the Alpha, but the, you know it's a, a very typical Microtech box here. Um, let's see. I'm gonna get rid of this here. I don't want to advertise. No free advertisement here. Sorry. You can pay for it. Like I do. So here's the box. You got your mic check, whatever. And then here we go. The SOCOM Bravo. Ooh, nice weight to it. Oh, I like it already. Oh, wow. So this is uh, the difference between this one and this one here. Is Obviously, this is USA made. This is Chinese. But uh, this is aluminum with like a rubber insert. And this is titanium with carbon fiber. Really feels substantial. And this backspacer here looks pretty nice. I really I really like that. Um, all right, let's put this off to the side. Let's get rid of this box. Man, I like the weight of this. Let's see. All right, before I move on, talking about the weight. Uh, so this here weighs... 5.8 versus 5.4 so 0.4 ounces more and then for you guys that like the uh grams 164 grams all right so getting back to what i was saying um when I carry a knife, I like to know that it's capable. You know, I started off with these gentleman knives. And when I'm working, of course, the gentleman knives hide better and I'll, I'll still carry them. But, you know, it's been a while since I've been in an office where I had to worry about that. My my last job, I didn't have to worry about that. So, um, but if I carry a knife, I like a knife to be capable. And a gentleman's knife doesn't 
cut it. Well, I'm just looking at this thing. I'm admiring the fit and finish. Everything comes to a perfect termination here. Um, you know, this is not as hot spotty as I thought it would be. Uh, you see pictures of it. You hear a lot of people talking about how hot spot it is, but <laughs> I don't feel it being hot spot at all. I mean, there's, there's obviously there's lines here and there's some texture. I mean, down here is, is probably... It's probably the worst of all of it. Um, all right, so I've been holding off on flicking this out because there's a surprise here. I mean, it's in a, it's in the description, but for me, it's a surprise. Um, so anyway, let's flick it out. Oof. So this is my first ever um, knife with a um, serrated edge here. It's a partially serrated edge. They had a full serrated one. Um, I went with this partial. Well, I kind of like how this finishes. There's like a a different finish between this line here, the top of this blade, the be I don't know if it's a bevel, and then this this sloped here. It's uh, I don't know if it's coated or it's just bead blasted. I think people say it's bead blasted, but I'm just not sure. It almost feels like it's a coat to it, but maybe it's not. Oh. So that's the, uh, it's a Reich made knife in China. So that's their insignia. And it's, here's all your branding from Microtech. It's made in April 2023. M390. Mm. Yeah. See? Look at this thickness of this blade. Wow. Huh. You know what? It doesn't feel super duper sharp. Like the other one does. Let's see. There's hardly any room here to do this. But. Huh. Yeah, so the, uh, that's right. The edge here, um, this, one of the criticisms that you find a lot about this knife online is that it's thicker behind the edge, and the stock is thicker. Um, well, and actually, I don't know if the stock is thicker, but uh, but because the grind starts lower, supposedly, and you know what? I'm not even sure the grind starts lower. But for whatever reason, it doesn't. the The edge behind the thickness behind the edge is supposedly almost twice as thick as this. And I don't want to give out measurements here, but um, I believe this is under 20,000. I think maybe it's like 14,000 or something. Don't quote me on that at all. And I think this is over 20,000. So, But why would it be thicker if the blade stock is the same and the, uh, the grind line starts around the same? I, I don't see how... Uh, this doesn't look like it starts any lower. So where the fuller here is... This here is just a, a full thickness. So I kept on thinking about why does this feel like it's not as sharp as this one when the blade thickness feels the same and the grind starts around the same spot. And it's because of the, it's the angle that this blade is grinded at. I don't know if you can see, but see how big that bevel is? And this one barely has one. So I haven't measured it, you know, what angle it's on, but this is, you know, probably 25, maybe even 30 degrees where this is less. It might be 20. So that's part of the reason why it doesn't cut as much as well. So I'm glad I solved that one. So if I had to um, talk about an improvement here, this area right here, what it could have been, it could be raised so you can, you know, the, the frame lock, the, it could be raised above the scale, which is proper. But instead of it making it flat, you put a little curvature in there and this, your finger would fit, would rest so much better in this spot. Because right now it's just resting on a flat bar. So if you see here, this is rounded. So... You can raise it, but round it a little bit. 
though. When I say raise it, uh, you see how this you can you can see the frame lock is higher than the scale. So you can have it higher, but then put a little curvature in there. Because that's what I'm feeling. When I hold this knife, uh, it's just my fingers up against this flat spot. And that doesn't feel good at all. And it's on the flat spot, and it's actually right here where, these, uh, where the frame meets the scale. It's not a great spot for that. You want your hand to like kind of rest just on this frame, not on on where they meet. And even if if you do rest where they meet, put a little curvature in there. So anyway, supposedly this doesn't. The point is this doesn't feel as sharp. Oh yeah, let me use the serrated edge. This doesn't feel as sharp as the USA made one. Can you see that? I don't even want to mess with that. That's it's too. We'll do that a little. I'll raise the screen for that. So this one has a a bronze collar, and there's a there's a blue one too. I actually wanted the blue one, but uh, they sold out of it. But this is this is nice. I like this. Um, let's see. They say this pocket clip is not that great. Like the ramp here is too sharp. And that it's, you know, tougher to get in the pocket and that you need to lift it when you put it in. So, again, this is not a review. So, I will get to that and we'll review that. We'll figure it out and see if it's true. But, you know, holding it, it feels like this is a little bit of a hot spot here. That's kind of awkward. Yeah, okay. That's an awkward thing. Feels awkward. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So, this is cut out. And then this is flat, so when you grab it, it feels weird right here, huh? Yeah, I would certainly wouldn't want to hard use this knife, but I mean, I didn't get it to hard use. Ooh, oh man, look at that drop! Oh, almost caught my finger. So busy talking here, I'm just not used to it falling down like that so quickly. See, because this one here, the uh, the detent. I think it sits on a on a deep the ball the detent ball sits on the ramp for longer. See, yeah, there's a, a double clutch situation there. Okay, does this have that? It, it just cleared the detent ball there, and that's it. Okay, so let's try this again. That cleared the detent bowl right there. And that's still, and, and that cleared the detent bowl right there. Oops, keeps on falling back on the ramp. So it's definitely, this takes longer to clear the detent ramp, which I'm not crazy about, but it, it I hate the double clutch. If anybody, if you watch my videos, I, I just can't stand the double clutch. See, it's because you let it go and then you think it's going to fall and now it's still stuck. And you, so you got to let it, you got to bring the blade down further than here. But then, then this one just fell right down. So <laughs> now that's not a bad sound. Oh, I like that. Hmm. So you don't want to let it drop, though. So you got to, yeah. And that's it. This is a little bit of a guillotine for sure, um, and I'm sure it's just going to get even more so. But I like the I like the feel of this. The only thing that this one I, I'm not crazy about is this the the height of this pocket clip, and that's a uh, another thing I, I remember now that I'm saying that I hear people talking about that's a bad thing. Uh, this is like an inch wide, I think, if uh, from the, the widest point, according to some uh, reviewers. But regardless of how wide it is, it definitely you feel when you put your fingers on there, you feel like this is much higher than the knife. So it's kind of interesting. So when you think about a knife, they're not knives are not all designed equally and could be used the same way. So when you buy a knife, you should 
you know, buy a knife that's designed for the use that you have intended for it. So the, well, I see this knife as really as a self-defense knife. And I mean, you can cut boxes and paper, but at the end of the day, if I had to, you know, fight in a situation where, you know, if I had, if I had to try to save my life and I needed to use a knife to try to save my life, this would be it. And that's why I bought it. And so I have it and I'm going to, I think I'm going to be carrying this one. We'll say it's certainly not as beautiful as my, you know, Les George's and, and other knives, the hinderer. I, lo I love some of my hinderers. Um, but this feels super capable. I tell you what, I don't like this area at all right here where this bar is for some reason, for some reason my finger falls right there. So anyway, what I was trying to say is that so as com as uncomfortable as this knife may be for long term use, it's not designed for that. So if you had to go in, you had a fight or whatever, and you know with a, a bear, <laughs> who knows that you know you're not going to be holding on to it forever. These you know typically those situations, those scenarios don't last very long at all. Um, not that I overly think about it, but the reality of it is. You know, they're over in seconds. So the fact that this, uh, you know, might be uncomfortable to hold for five minutes of batoning, it doesn't matter, you know, to me. It's not, I don't view a knife as a, as good for every situation, right? A gentleman knife is great for conceal and going to work and using it to open, uh, you know, envelopes or packages, and, th and that's great. But I wouldn't want to use that to pry open a window and you know, there's a fire, a house fire, and you're trying to get out, you know, and break through a door or, or, or whatever. Not that I think about these scenarios. I'm just trying to say that um, the reality of it is that a knife like this is much more capable than a gentleman's knife. That's all I'm saying. And that the thicker the stock is, the more likely it could withstand lateral pressure. Uh, so I want to point out that here's these thumb studs. They're also blade, blade locks. So it helps prevent the side to side movement. And in this knife, wow, there is like zero play. Wow, that is lock vault solid. Love it. Um, I love the sound. I like this. I think I, I went with the serrated because what I understand is serrated is just so good at cutting, you know, rope or whatever tires or if you needed something. So this is a um, a great edge for that. And if I want to cut like a box or whatever, I have, you know, these these points here. And then I want to also point out. So this is a Tonto blade. So you have like two tips here. You have like this tip here for box cutting and then. This point right here is also like a tip of sorts. You can get it in there. Um, you know, you can put your, your finger up on top here to get a lot of pressure down over the, the serration. I just like how everything's chamfered. There's really not a ton of, I wouldn't say, there's really not a sharp corner here. I mean, this is not 100% in, in rounded, let's say right here, but... It's definitely not sharp. Man, I love that tip. Look at that. Can you see that? Wow. Like you'd think that would be able to withstand something. Even if it broke, let's say that this tip broke, it would only be that much of it that would break. I mean, it would still be something useful. Um, I hear some reviewers talk about the corners here and how they're sharp. I mean, they're certainly not rounded, for sure. And I can imagine in hard use, yeah, that would definitely get on my nerves. So, but I don't, I don't intend to use this for hard use. You know, if I go camping and riding, I might have this as my jacket knife, you know, when I go out. But to use around the campground, I would use a fixed blade. So, like I said, they're, they're all, one knife is not good for every single purpose. All right, so going over some final other things that I see about this knife. So it's a right side tip up only. There's no option for that. There's a lanyard hole, but 
there is no glass breaker. I also noticed that there's like, is there springs? No, there's a screw. I don't know if you can see down in there, yeah. Right in there and right in there, there's screws. So that holding this back space it together. Oh, and I also saw one reviewer said that when, as he was really hard beating on this knife, like really, really hard using hammers and whatever, that this insert pushed down onto the tang of the blade and prevented it from closing. But wow, that gap, gap here, my version is it's like that wide. So it would have to have moved quite a bit because there's no strength up here where these things match. So, you know, maybe if they had a pin in there, it would give this a little more strength up at the top here. But I don't, I mean, that's what he said. Uh, I don't doubt for one second he had that problem, but uh, I, if you use it like that, you know, anything could happen. You're, you're beating the, you're beating the knife up. So, all right. I just want to give you my first impressions. Oh yeah, let's talk about size. So this is definitely not a review. I'm just talking about size. So I went with this version here because, like I said, it's um had serration and tip up. So this is a great size knife, nine inches. That's you know my sweet spot is like really quite honestly from seven and change up to nine. I really like eight and a quarter ish, eight and a half. Uh, absolutely nine. Got no problem with. Um, it's a nice size knife. So anyway, what do we got here? We got four inches of stock. The actual cutting blade is three and three quarters. The serration is in under an inch and a half long. The serration. Yeah, that, that blade is definitely not real sharp. It don't feel real sharp. You know what? It is what it is. I can Maybe I'll strop that. I mean, the, the reality of it, I don't want to, you know, say that this is a bad thing, that it's not super duper sharp. This is a tactical knife. It's going to be sharp enough for sure. It is designed to have a thicker edge to withstand blows and, and all kinds of stuff, you know, like it. So the geometry is more for tactical purposes. I do like this, uh, this collar. The bronze collar is nice. I thought the blue would be nice, but yeah, that, that bronze looks pretty good as far as I'm concerned. I do like this uh, carbon fiber. I just love how everything is just perfectly milled. And there's no gaps, no nothing. I love it. I'll close this. Knife is dead on center. Yeah, this, this area here is a little sharp-ish. But, you know, I'm going to be wearing, I'm going to be carrying this a lot. And that will round out a little bit. Just from, from carrying it. What kind of a lock is it? Yeah, it's a frame lock. I was trying to thought I thought well maybe it might be a liner lock. But no, it's definitely it's definitely a frame lock. It's got a steel lock bar insert, which is awesome. And yeah, it looks like it has an is that an overtrawl? Yes, and it also has a uh, lock bar over travel stop. So that's great. I like the clicky sound. Let me, let me see if you can hear that. Now, it doesn't sound as good as the SOCOM Elite. Let's see. That's, this one is just like a thwack. Love it. And actually, this is funny. This one was made after this one, and I've had this one for months. <laughs> That's how popular those uh, elites are. These uh, the community is kind of 
you know, against this being Chinese. And, and I, you know what? So am I, I guess, in a sense. I mean, I bought it because it's what, what I want. It's designed to be what I want. I mean, I, I'd like this. If this knife was a, a tip up, I would have not bought this one. But it's not. So there you go. I'm not going to cry about it. Um, were there other tactical USA mini knives? Probably. I don't know. But, you know, I, I was, um, I might be retired at this moment. And so I don't have income coming in. And I decided that to have one tactical knife with serrations on it, I'm going to, I'm going to bite the bullet and go with the Chinese knife because this knife was cheaper. So this was $350. You know, people said if this is a U.S. knife, it would be, you hear as low as $500, you hear like $800, that number thrown out there. You know, Microtech typically has very high prices. But um, because, but this one here was cheaper. This knife here, made in the USA, I think it was three and a quarter. And even if it wasn't, let's say it was three fifty, because I forget, I'm sorry, I buy so many knives. Even if it was three fifty, it's the same price. But, you know, the labor cost in China is, is much lower. But this one has titanium and carbon fiber, which it should cost more money than aluminum. And because these things are so fitted together, there's a lot more work involved in it. And there's a lot more milling involved in it. So there's a lot more labor here. I, I don't know. I really... I like this. So anyway, this is the first impression. I like it except for this This thing here is really annoying me. But it's not going to prevent me from carrying it because it's going to be, like I said, a tactical knife. I'm not going to sit there and play with it. You know, when I, I'm at home and I play with the knives all the time, I might play with a different knife. So um, it's not as fidgety as, as I, I would love for my carry knife. But and yeah, I'm not so crazy about this height. So I think those are the two things that I would say bother me of any if anything bothers me about this knife it would be those two things the thickness of this and the way this area right here feels with your finger on the lock bar it just it feels out of place it's definitely not contoured it definitely is not designed to fit your hand I mean it's designed to keep this thing open I mean, that lockout looks pretty solid. And you can see the tang of the blade is kind of sloped up. So it prevents maybe this thing from wearing out and, and moving further into the into the tang. Since the tang gets lower and lower and lower. So that's a good design. These, these things look like a bigger size T8. And yeah, that's another thing. This is a T20. Um... And then these are T8s, I believe. I'm pretty sure. And there's a lot of screws in this thing. If you take off this carbon fiber, I've seen a video where they're taking it off. And you pretty much have to slide it down. It's like fitted a little underneath here. Um, there's screws underneath there too. Tons and tons of screws. And then, I don't know if you can see that in there, that barrel. Let me... Hmm. So it's hard to point to it. There's a barrel down here. That's the blade stop um, when you when you close this knife. That's a typical Microtech, at least. At least it's the same one as that. All right, first impressions. I'm really digging this knife. Um, I have high hopes for it to be my tactical knife. I'm not so not so sure. I love that clip. Uh, if there's ever aftermarket clip, I might go for it. I really don't care about the looks. I, you know, quite honestly, I. I, I like the function of this clip. And, you know, this might go well with with this knife because it's it's designed and it looks higher end and then, and this knife is, looks, is higher end, right? So this kind of maybe visually fits this knife. But from a practicality standpoint, I, I, I just don't understand that. But it's not a review, so I may love it or I may hate it. There's a lot of space here, and it looks like you'll be able to, you know, fit it over your pocket, no problem. So we'll see. I'm going to just stick it in my pocket real quick while we're talking. Okay. Yeah, that went in. 
relatively no problem. I, I kind of held this and slipped it in there. Uh, no problem. So I'll get back to you on that. And then I don't know if I did a comparison, but let's go ahead in terms of size, do a comparison. And they're pretty much the same size knife. All right. You really can't, can't complain. You know, you hear on the internet that you can't compare this knife to that knife because this knife is not a replacement to that knife and whatever. This knife is this knife and that knife is that knife. I don't know necessarily if I buy that per se. I mean, this, you know, technically you're right, right? This is a replacement to the alpha for sure. Um, but there are so many similarities between these two that, I mean, this is almost like a, an upgrade to this one, almost. It's sort of like the Hinder issue where the Eclipse was supposedly the upgrade to the XM18 design. They never got rid of the XM18 and they never got rid of the Eclipse. So they both exist, but that's, that's like an evolution. This here, I'm not sure what this is. This is like, uh, to me, it's the same knife. I mean, you know, don't beat me up over that internet here, guys. But, um, you know, there's a lot of similarities between these two. I mean, just look at the shape. I mean, they're, the, the thumb sets the same. Anyway, I'm not going to get to it. I like this knife so far. I I made a great decision buying it. It's definitely I feel like if I'm if I had to use this knife, I I could I I could uh, do a lot with it. Maybe you know it would be it would serve the function uh, that I had intended for it. And that's another thing I I don't know if I made the point. I was going to make the point, and then I might have got sidetracked. That as rough as this thing might be ergonomically, um, it's just designed to get me through. Uh, a point and that point would only last a couple of seconds or, or a minute or two. And if it were to break like this, this tip here. And so maybe this is not the, the thickest tip I've ever seen in, in my entire world. Um, let's say if that were to break, it wouldn't matter because I just needed to get through, you know, any situation. And that situation is not going to last very long. And it's going to be, you know, most likely, It'll never happen, and if it does happen, only one thing would need uh, would happen. Like you know, like if um, like I don't need this to uh, survive nineteen obstacles during the day, right? Uh, on any given day, like if something bad happened, it's not going to be like you know this has got to get me through nine obstacles in advance. And it's just like it might just have to get me through one. So, and I think for that, to get you through an obstacle or maybe even two, this is great. I mean, no matter if it's uncomfortable or the jumping's here or whatever, uh, what's going to function, what's going to make this get me through the day is the, the blade thickness to it. Hopefully the serrations. I think the serrations going to be really good for cutting cutting stuff that, that a flat edge, it doesn't work very really well. So... Um, so that's, what's going to get me through it is the, and the, the super lockout. I mean, the, the fact that this is a solid knife, I will be carrying this knife and I will be giving you a full review at that time. Thank you for joining me. Please subscribe to this channel and I have a whole playlist of other knife content. So please go ahead and check that out. I also have, a um, camping, moto camping, motorcycle camping and motorcycle content. So go to the my playlist. Please review my other videos. Um, I also have a Facebook page and an Instagram account under Appalachian ADV Rider under the same name. So please join there. And I uh, really enjoy doing this with you and enjoy talking to you and spending this time together. So thank you. And I will see you next time.